seeing me right now through that monitor in front of you? The answer is yes or no, and if you can't choose, you can't perceive me. You don't know whether I'm here or not. One or zero, yes or no. Binary logic is something you depend on. Without it, you can't have so much as a single perception. If we can base insight to God, on binary logic, we've got it made. We don't need faith anymore. It's extraneous, irrelevant. I am closer to absolute truth than any man has been before me. Do I think that makes me better than everybody else? No. I still work in a bar. I was working construction during the day, and I was working in a bar at night, and I happened to see a copy of Omni magazine. It said, the world's most difficult IQ test. It consists of 48 problems, some of which are extremely difficult. I think, gee, that's interesting. You know, that's, that's interesting. I always wanted to know what my IQ was. The verbal problems were all pretty easy, so I just breezed through them. I happen to have a larger than average vocabulary. The really difficult ones were some of the spatial problems and the number sequences. Actually, highly difficult. So as it turned out, I ended up setting a record score on that test. And the Guinness Book was actually going to switch the world's highest IQ title to me, but then they dropped the highest IQ listing. IQ is not really a PC concept anymore, and I guess the Guinness Book fell victim to PC. My IQ would be somewhere between 190 and 210. 210 seems very, very, very high. It does seem that way, doesn't it? Albert Einstein was estimated at between 180 and 190. Charles Darwin is way down there in the toilet at 135. Are you a genius? Well, you're kind of putting me on the spot here, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're, you're, for, you're forcing me to either say no, in which case, you know, it's all hype, or you're forcing me to say yes. I'll, I'll say probably, yes, I am a genius by most of the criteria. The definitive criteria of genius, I think you'd have to consider me a genius, yeah. At the age of six or seven months, I started pointing at objects and giving their correct names. A little red pair of shoes with, uh, with little brass buckles on them that I really loved. And I thought that buckle was a beautiful word, so I pointed to the buckle on one of these shoes and said, Buckle. Shortly thereafter, I started talking in sentences. I seemed to have an understanding of syntax. And uh, so I was a very early talker. I heard my mother talking about this little girl. Becky already knew how to read. I thought, well, I'm certainly not going to be beaten by her. She didn't seem especially intelligent to me, and I just knew I could out-accelerate her. At the age of uh, three or four, I started writing a book. It's an illustrated volume on s snakes, lizards, and turtles. I had this just this knowledge, this, this utter knowledge that someday I would do something qualified me as being a genius. I could get straight A's in school without doing a thing. 
So I skipped a few grades. Everybody would look at me and say, well, this kid must be smarter, otherwise he wouldn't be so much younger than we are. By the same token, he's weaker than we are, so why don't we pick on him a little, you know? Kids don't like other kids around them that are praised for being smarter than they are. Why can't you be more like that kid? That kid is so much smarter than you are. Look at that kid's work, so much better than yours is. I mean, that's got to be an unpleasant thing. We were always the poorest family in town. All kinds of welts on our bodies and fat lips. Kids are like sharks. They made the mistake of thinking these welts and things were signs of me being weaker than they were. <laughs> they rapidly found out that wasn't the case. My actual father had died. This was only one of the bad breaks that my mother got in the man department. They had a habit of dying or disappearing. The only one that really hung around, which was my stepfather, turned out to be a total psychopath. Just a mean and brutal guy, that's all. A bastard. Yeah, a rat bastard. Jack did not like to be in the presence of anyone more intelligent than he was. I saw him put on this pair of leather gloves. I noticed you're a pretty smart kid, he said. You probably know how many miles it is to the sun, don't you? And I said, yes, as a matter of fact, I do know how many miles it is to the sun. It's, you know, between 92 and 93 million miles. Kablam, right in the mouth. The reason he put on the gloves was that he wouldn't skin his knuckles. In this world, if you pretend to be too much smarter than other people, you're going to get into trouble for that. He was going to be the vehicle of my enlightenment. <laughs> We got a horse. The horse's name was Whitco. If the fence wasn't high enough, and they were never high enough, this horse would just get away. So he entrusted me with making sure that the horse did not escape. The first time the horse got away, you know, the old man beat the crap out of me, just like I knew he would. Next, he went down and got himself a heavy galvanized dog chain and a couple of padlocks. Puts one end of the dog chain around the horse's neck and padlocks it. And he says, come here. And I went over there, and he put the other end around my waist, and he padlocked that. And he drives off. It was only a matter of time. The horse naturally went through the barbed wire fence, and it dragged me up a dirt street and part of the way down Main Street before the chain broke. I was covered with blood, blood in my eyes. You know, I was like, went from my eyes now. Finally, I managed to get home, and I'm walking up the front steps, and all of a sudden, kabam! I find myself flat on my back. I couldn't breathe. And I was going, <gasps> There's the old man standing over me and says, I told you not to let that blanket horse get away. <laughs> Until finally, when I was 14, I just booted his ass out. Beat him half to death and told him that if he ever came back, that was going to be the end of him. I found the whole experience of school to be highly annoying. I think I could have wrapped the whole thing up in a couple of years. Instead, they managed to keep me around for 12. <laughs> I spent most of the last two years sitting in the library. I just had had it. I told them I was tired of it and wasn't going to take it anymore, wasn't going to be showing up unless they made some special provision for me. And when I wasn't in the library, I wasn't there at all. My teachers just didn't particularly care for me. Here's a kid. He's ragged. He looks mangy and hungry. He's known for getting into fights. The rule was either total indifference or outright hostility. It would have been nice if somebody had said, we've been keeping this kid down too long, let's send him away to college or university, but nobody gave enough of a hoot to bother doing that. So that's it. Maybe by that point they thought I was too far gone. <laughs> Maybe they were right. I was